Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samma sambuddhasa. Okay, so we continue readings from the life of the Buddha, and uh, <coughs> the vast majority <coughs> of these, the last couple days, and then into the next, probably next couple days as well, <coughs> are are all from the. Uh, uh, not all from mostly uh, from the uh, uh, the Mahavagga in the the Vinaya texts, and uh, <coughs> it is um, one of the um, well, actually it's probably the only really uh, chronological account of anything in the canon, um, so that it it goes from the uh, uh, the story of the Buddha's awakening through to the arrival of the, the two great disciples, Sariputta and Mahamogalana. And, uh <coughs> and that uh, uh, um, a lot of the other, say, biographical, historical, Aspects of the uh, uh, of the readings, <coughs> some will come from the Vinaya, but it's not. Uh, it's sort of it comes up at, at kind of random, where it's illustrating a, a rule, or it's uh, um, um, it's it's not sort of like a you know, chronological from point A in time to point B in time. Uh, this is really the, the, the only point in the canon uh, that really tries to do that. <coughs> and, uh, and, then, uh, uh, and I think for the, um, the most part, the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the vinya tends to be one of the least uh, kind of tampered uh, um, uh, or commented on or tweaked uh, uh, just because probably most people weren't interested in Vinaya. I mean, it's, so it's, it does give a, a, good, uh, a good account of things, although they uh, say, like, we'll go into the story of the, the Kasava brothers and it's, it's you know, kind of convoluted and shaggy dog type story. Um, but I think at the core of it, there's a, uh, to me, there's a, there's a real, a ring of, ring of truth to it. And, uh, <coughs> um, so that the, the, w w we'll continue from where, uh, Ajahn Yaniko left off, which was, um, and he, and he already mentioned that, uh, there was, a uh, yeah, these 30 friends who, and this is after, so that, after the Buddha's um, <coughs> exhorting the sixty arahants to sort of go off and to uh, um, teach, and and then and then also the stories of the uh, uh, establishing of the 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 new way of of uh, giving uh, ordination um, uh, using the the triple gem. Um, uh, then the Buddha is as he's off to uh, Uruvela, and uh, and it's on the um, it's sort of on that between say Benares and uh, and the area around Raj Rajgir Uruvela that uh, he has this occasion that comes up where <coughs> there are. Thirty friends. They're on a picnic with their wives, and and uh, uh, one of them, they one of them didn't have a wife, so they they organized for a 
uh, a prostitute to come along. Um, apparently, she took some stuff, and uh, anyway, they uh, they ended up searching for her, and then it's uh, then uh, and then the, the Buddha says, "Well, what's better for you to be doing? Uh, should you be seeking a woman or seek yourselves?" And I said, "Oh, okay. Well, I guess we should." seek ourselves, and he said, well, well, then sit down, I'll teach you the Dhamma. So then he, he uh, they gain inspiration from that, and then the story goes on. <coughs> the Blessed One journeyed on by stages till he at length arrived at Uruvela. Now at that time, three matted hair ascetics were living at Uruvela called Kasapa of Uruvela, Kasapa of the River, and Kasapa of Gaya. Kasapa of Uruvela was the leader, guide, chief, head and principal of 500 matted hair ascetics, Kasapa of the river uh, of 300 and Kasapa of Gaya of 200. The Blessed One went to the hermitage of Kasapa of Uruvela and he said, Kasapa, if you have no objection, I should like to spend one night in your fire chamber. I have no objection, great monk, but there is a savage royal Naga serpent there. He has supernormal powers. He is venomous, fearfully poisonous, and capable of killing you. The Blessed One asked a second time and a third time <coughs> and received the same reply. He said, perhaps he will not destroy me, Kasapa, so grant me the fire chamber. Then stay there as long as you like, great monk. Also, um, the uh, just I, I remember one time <coughs> listening to uh, a, a monk uh, which, um, Mahalabal uh, from Wat Bawan. He was really uh, <coughs> he was uh, in terms of his knowledge of the uh, Tripitaka and and knowledge of the teachings. He was probably on a par with. Uh, um, Papa Yuto, um, and uh, uh, extremely erudite, ex very very knowledgeable, very capable, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, he was a good teacher. One of the remember him. One of the things that he said uh, in relating, talking about this is that you know, uh, reflecting on the Buddha as a uh, that, that there's nothing, he, he didn't feel that there was anything random, like the Buddha was just sort of, okay, I got enlightened, uh, now I'll just wander around India. Uh, and But that there was a, um, one, he was um, a, uh, a, a warrior noble, well-trained, well-educated, knew the society and the culture, and... and uh <coughs> and probably knew or felt that uh, staying around Benares, Benares has been a, uh, it's sort of like Jerusalem in the sense of layers and layers of, of this city, uh, you know, go back thousands of years, and in the same way that Jerusalem, that Benares does the same. And it has this, this very strong uh, relationship to the, the uh, the, its Vedic roots, its religious structures, which is very much a part of the, the uh, <coughs> say, the Brahmin tradition. And probably if I just, not going to make that much of a dent here. Uh, and um, and then went on to, to return to the area around uh, of Magadha. Uh, the, uh, say, Benares was in the, in the, what's called Kasi, um, kind of district or kingdom, <coughs> and uh, went to Magadha feeling that he would be, uh, probably feeling that he'd be better received and that there was a, also going, and if you're going to go and and to teach and to draw people in, uh, you may as well go and teach the most kind of respected and and popular teacher of the time, which was the, say, these 
Hasuba brothers, and they were <coughs> ascetics, fire worshiping, uh, matted hair ascetics. So they're quite an ordinary part of their the uh, the the tradition. So there's a certain element of yeah, there's a certain strategy. It's it's, it's not not just random hope hope things work work okay. So what what would be a good way to to make good use of my my, my time and the opportunity and, and the so he went to <coughs> teach, and of course, then after teaching, the the uh, uh, the, the the most um, say renowned teachers of the time. Then he went and and went to the the capital and uh, taught the uh, the King Bimbisara and and uh, and the court, so that uh, uh, within a year he had he was starting to get. Northern India and uh, soared up. Um, <coughs> anyway, so then he's, he's, so he's, he's, so the Blessed One went into the fire chamber. He spread out a rush mat and sat down, folding his legs crosswise, setting his body erect and establishing mindfulness in front of him. When the Naga saw the Blessed One come in, he was angry and he produced smoke. Then the Blessed One thought, suppose I counter his fire by fire without injuring his outer skin or inner skin or flesh or sinews or bones or marrow. He did so, and he produced smoke. Then the Naga, no longer restraining his fury, produced flames. The Blessed One entered upon the fire element and produced flames too. The fire chamber seemed to burn and blaze and glow with their flames. The matted hair ascetics gathered round, they said, the great monk who is so beautiful is being destroyed by the Naga. When the night was over and the Blessed One had countered the Naga's fire by fire without injuring him, he put him into his bowl and showed him to Uravela Kasapa. This is your Naga, Kasapa. His fire has been countered by fire. Then Uravela Kasapa thought, The great monk is very mighty and powerful. Since he is able to counter by fire the fire of the savage royal Naga serpent with supernormal powers who is venomous, fearfully poisonous, but he is not an arahant like me. The Blessed One then went to live in a wood not far from Kasapa's hermitage. <coughs> when the night was well advanced, uh, the four divine kings, marvelous to see and illuminating the whole wood, went to the Blessed One, and after paying homage to him, they stood at the four quarters like pillars of fire. When the night was over, the matted hair ascetic Uruvela Kasapa went to the Blessed One and said, It is time, great monk, the meal is ready. Who were those that came to you in the night? They were the divine kings of the four quarters, Kasapa. They came to, they came to me to hear the Dhamma. Then Kasapa thought, The great monk is very mighty and powerful since the divine kings come to him to hear the Dhamma but he is not an arahant like me. On subsequent nights, Saka, ruler of gods, and Brahma Sahampati came to the Blessed One. They were seen by Kasapa, and the sequel was the same. It was at this time that Uruvela Kasapa's great sacrificial ceremony fell due, and people from all Anga and Magadha came e eagerly bringing large quantities of various kinds of food. Then Kasapa thought, now, my great sacrificial ceremony falls due, and people from all Anga and Magadha are coming eagerly, bringing large quantities of various kinds of food. If that great monk works a marvel before all these people, his gain and renown will increase, and mine will diminish. If only the great monk were not to come tomorrow. The Blessed One became aware in his mind of the thought <coughs> in Kasapa's mind. So he went to the northern continent of Uttarakuru and gathered alms food there. Then he took the alms food to the Himalayan, Himalayan lake of Anotata, where he ate it and passed the day. When the night was over, uh, these are kind of like um, mythical places, the great northern continent and the lake that's there. Uh, when the night was over, Kasapa went to the Blessed One and said, It is time, great monk, the meal is ready. Why did the great monk not come yesterday? We wondered why you did not come. 
your portion of food was laid out. The Blessed One told him. Then Kasapa thought, the great monk is very mighty and powerful, since he was aware in his mind of the thought in my mind. But he is not an arahant like me. When the Blessed One had eaten Uruvela Kasapa's meal, he went back to live in the same wood. Now at that time, a refuse rag came into the Blessed One's possession. He thought, where shall I wash the refuse rag? Then Saka, ruler of gods, became aware in his mind of the thought in the Blessed One's mind. He scooped out a pond with his hand, and he told the Blessed One, Lord, let the Blessed One wash the refuse rag here. Next, the Blessed One thought, What shall I beat the refuse rag on? Then Saka, ruler of gods, aware in his mind of the thought in the Blessed One's mind, set down a large stone. Lord, let the Blessed One beat the refuse rag here. Next, the Blessed One thought, What shall I hang the refuse rag on? Then a deity living in a kukudda tree bent down a branch. Lord, let the Blessed One hang the refuse rag here. Next, the Blessed One thought, What shall I smooth the refuse rag on? Then Saka, ruler of God, set down a large stone. Lord, let the Blessed One smooth the refuse rag here. When the night was over, Kasapa went to the Blessed One and said, it is time, great monk, the meal is ready. But, great monk, how does this pond come to be here that was not here before? Who set down this stone that was not here before? How is this kakuda branch bent down that was not bent down before? The blessed one told him what had occurred. Then Kasapa thought, the great monk is very mighty and powerful since Saka, ruler of gods, waits on him. But he is not an arahant like me. Again, the when the night was over, Kasapa went to the Blessed One and told him, It is time, great monk, the meal is ready. The Blessed One dismissed him, saying, Go, Kasapa, I shall follow. He went to the rose apple tree, after which the rose apple continent of India is called, and he secured a fruit. Then he arrived first and sat down in the fire chamber. Kasapa saw him sitting there, and he added, Great monk, what road did you come by? I left before you, but you have arrived before me and are here sitting in the fire chamber. The Blessed One told him where he had been, and he added, Here is a rose apple. It is colored and has scent and taste. Eat it if you like. No, great monk, you brought it. You should eat it. Then Kasapa thought, The great monk is very mighty and powerful. Since he sends me off first and then goes to the rose apple tree, secures a fruit, arrives here before me, and is here sitting in the fire chamber. But he is not an arahant like me. Afterwards, the Blessed One returned to the wood. Again, on like occasions, the Blessed One went to the rose apple tree and secured a mango from a tree nearby, secured a gallnut, secured a yellow gallnut, went to the heaven of the 33 and secured a flower from the Parichattaka tree. Each time, Katsapa had the same thoughts as before. It was at this time that the matted hair ascetics, wanting to maintain their fires, found themselves unable to split logs. Then they thought, it must be because of the great monk's supernormal power that we cannot split the logs. The Blessed One asked Katsapa, should the logs be split, Kasapa? They should be split, great monk. At once the 500 logs were split. Then Kasapa thought, The great monk is very mighty and powerful since the logs could not be split. But he is not an arahant like me. And again, on like occasions, the matted hair ascetics wanting to maintain their fire could likewise not light their fires, could likewise not put out their fires. And each time, Kasapa had the same thoughts as before. <coughs> At that time, too, on those cold, wintry nights during the, quote-unquote, eight days of frost, the matted hair ascetics were immersing themselves in the river Nairanjara and emerging from it, constantly immersing and, em and emerging. Then the Blessed One created 500 braziers for the matted hair ascetics to warm themselves at when they came up out of the water. They thought, these braziers must have been created by the great monk's supernormal power. Then Kasapa thought, 
the great monk is very mighty and powerful since he has created so many braziers. But he is not an arahant like me. About that time, too, a great rainstorm burst out of season and produced a large inundation. The place where the Blessed One was living was all underwater. Then he thought, suppose I made the water stand back all, ar all around so that I could walk in between on dry land. And he did so. Kasapa thought, I hope the great monk has not been carried away by the water. And he went by boat with a number of matted hair ascetics to the place where the Blessed One was living. He saw that the Blessed One had made the water stand back all round and was walking in between on dry ground. When he saw, he said, Is that you, great monk? It is I, Kasapa. The Blessed One rose up into the air and came to rest on the boat. Then Kasapa thought, The great monk is very mighty and powerful, since even the water has not overcome him. But he is not an arahant like me. Then the Blessed One thought, this misguided man will go on forever thinking, but he is not an arahant like me. Suppose I give him a shock. He told Uruvela Kasapa, Kasapa, you are neither an arahant nor are you on the way to becoming one. There is nothing that you do by which you might become an arahant or enter in the way of becoming one. Thereupon the matted hair ascetic prostrated himself with his head at the Blessed One's feet, and he said, Lord, I wish to receive the going forth and the admission from the Blessed One. But, Kasapa, you are the leader, guide, chief, head, and principal of 500 matted hair ascetics. You must consult them first so that they may do as they think fit. <coughs> so Uruvela Kasapa went to the other matted hair ascetics and told them, I want to lead the holy life under the great monk. You may do as you think fit. <coughs> We have long had faith in the great monk. If you lead the holy life under him, all of us will do likewise. Then the matted hair ascetics took their hair, their matted locks, and their belongings, and the furniture of the fire sacrifice, and they dropped them into the water to be carried away. They then went to the Blessed One, and prostrating themselves with their heads at his feet, they said, Lord, we wish to receive the going forth and the admission from the Blessed One. Come, bhikkhus, the Blessed One said. The Dhamma is well proclaimed. Lead the holy life for the complete ending of suffering. And that was those venerable ones' full admission. <coughs> the matted hair ascetic, Kasapa of the river, saw the hair, the matted logs, and the belongings and the furniture of the fire sacrifice being carried along by the water. He thought, I hope no disaster has befallen my brother. He sent matted hair ascetics, go and find out about my brother. And he went himself with his 300 matted hair ascetics to the venerable Uruvela Kasapa, and he asked him, Is this better, Kasapa? Yes, friend, this is better. Then those matted hair ascetics took their hair, their matted locks, and their belongings, and the furniture of the fire sacrifice, and they dropped them into the water to be carried away. Then they went to the Blessed One and prostrating themselves with their heads at his feet, they asked for and received the going forth and the admission. And the blessed and the matted hair ascetic, Kasapa of Gaia, <coughs> with his two hundred matted hair ascetics, did just as Kasapa of the river had done. So then there's bit of a break in the in the uh, uh, in the uh, um, uh, in the story or in the account and uh, and is a uh, a way uh, it's from the <coughs> this isn't from the uh, um this is from the suttas, uh, from the Mara Samyutta, and uh, <coughs> probably the uh, and as well there's there is from the uh, Sutta Nipata uh, as well. Um, so from the from the Sutta Pitaka, 
and um, and it's because cause of the, I mean, they make a, 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 an inference where Mara is talking about seven years, so it's this six years of asceticism and then the year within which uh, we're, we're still in, so that they're uh, inserting it into this place here. So this is, this is from the uh, Sangyutta uh, 4, which is the, is the Mara Sangyutta. Thus I heard, at one time the Blessed One that was living at Uruvela by the Ajapala Nigroda tree on the banks of the river Neranjara. By that time, Mara the Evil One had been following the Blessed One for seven years, looking for an opportunity but finding none. <clears throat> then he went to the Blessed One and addressed him in stanzas. <coughs> Do you now dream in woods, immersed in sorrow? Have you lost wealth or are pining for it? Is there some crime done by you in the town? Why do you make no friends among the people? And is there none that you can call a friend? And the Buddha, the root of sorrow is dug out of me. Unsorrowing, I meditate in innocence. And free of taints, O cousin of the careless, as one rid of all hankering for being. Then Mara again. The things of which men say, it is mine, and men who utter the word mine, if you have thoughts allied to these, you cannot then escape me, monk. Things they call mine, I call not so. I am not one of those so saying. Hear this then, evil one, the path I know you cannot even see. If you have truly found a path that leads in safety to the deathless, depart, but go by it alone. What need to let another know? People who seek to cross beyond Ask me where death cannot prevail. Thus asked, I tell the end of all, where, there, where, where is no substance for rebirth. Suppose, Lord, not, and this is Mara again, suppose, Lord, not far from a town or a village, there were a pond with a crab in it, and then a party of boys or girls went out from the town or village to the pond. They went into the pond, pulled the crab out of the water, and set it on dry land. And whenever the crab extended a leg, they cut it off, broke it, and smashed it with sticks and stones so that the crab with all its legs cut off, broken and smashed, would be unable to get back to the pond as before. So too, all Mara's distorting, parodying, and travestying have been cut off, broken and smashed by the Blessed One. And now I cannot get near the Blessed One anymore when I seek an opportunity." Then Mara uttered those, these stanzas of disappointment in the Blessed One's presence. <coughs> um, step by step for seven years I have followed the Blessed One, the fully enlightened one, possessed of mindfulness, gave me no chance. A crow there was who walked around, a stone that seemed a lump of fat. Shall I find something soft in this? And is there something tasty here? He, finding nothing tasty there, made off. And we from Gotama depart in disappointment too, like to the crow that tried the stone. Full of sorrow, he let his lute slip un from under his arm, and then the unhappy demon vanished. So. And then <coughs> this next, um, it goes on. Uh, now after staying at Uruvela, this is still in, it goes back to the Vinaya again. Now after staying at Uruvela for as long as he chose, the Blessed One set out for Gaya Sisa with a large following of bhikkhus. 
with a thousand bhikkhus, with all the former married heresetics. The Blessed One stopped at Gaya Sisa, near Gaya, together with a thousand bhikkhus. There he addressed, addressed the bhikkhus thus. I mean, this is actually both from the Vinaya Mahavaga as well as from the Samyutta Nikaya. And of course, this is the, the fire sermon, the Adita Bhariya Sutta. Bhikkhus, all is burning. And what is all that is burning? The eye is burning. Visible forms are burning. Eye consciousness is burning. Eye contact is burning. Also, feeling, whether pleasant or painful or neither painful nor pleasant, that arises with eye contact as its condition, that too is burning. Burning with what? Burning with the fire of lust, with the fire of hate, with the fire of delusion. It is burning with birth, aging, and death, with sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair, I say. <clears throat> the ear is burning, sounds are burning, the nose is burning, odors are burning, the tongue is burning, flavors are burning, the body is burning, tangibles are burning, the mind is burning, mental objects are burning, mind consciousness is burning, mind contact is burning. Also the feeling, whether pleasant, painful, or neither painful nor pleasant, that arises with mind contact as its condition, that too is burning. Burning with what? Burning with the fire of lust, with the fire of hate, with the fire of delusion. It is burning with birth, aging, and death, with sorrow, lamentation, pain, grief, and despair, I say. Seeing thus, <coughs> because the wise, noble disciple becomes dispassionate toward the eye, towards visible forms, towards eye consciousness, towards eye contact. Also, he becomes dispassionate towards the feeling, whether pleasant, painful, or neither painful nor pleasant, that arises with eye contact as its condition. He becomes dispassionate toward the ear, toward sounds. He becomes dispassionate toward the nose, toward odors. He becomes dispassionate <coughs> toward the tongue, towards flavors. He becomes dispassionate towards the body, towards tangibles. He becomes... <coughs> <clears throat> he becomes dispassionate towards the mind, towards mental objects, towards mind consciousness, towards mind contact. Also, he becomes dispassionate towards the feeling, whether pleasant, painful, or neither painful nor pleasant, that arises with mind contact as its condition. Becoming dispassionate, his lust fades away. With the fading of lust, his heart is liberated. When his heart is liberated, there comes the knowledge, it is liberated. He understands, birth is exhausted, the holy life has been lived out, what was to be done is done, there is no more of this to come. And while this discourse was being delivered, the hearts of the thousand bhikkhus were delivered from taints through not clinging. So that... Uh, of course, is a, a, a sutta that we're very familiar with because we chant it regularly. Uh, the <coughs> translation in here is uh, is becoming, say, dispassionate towards the the sense and sense bases and sense objects. Um, like we we use disenchantment. Um, the word is nibbintiti. Um, and um, both of those words um, work work fine. Um, it's also the and say the the Buddha using that image of fire with um, this f fire worshiping uh, matted hair ascetics that would be a part of their their religious practice, and still is to today. I mean, that's you go to India, and especially uh, especially if you go to Banaras, um, and I mean, it's all over the place. But that's uh, that's a place that most pilgrims would would be. If you go to Sarnath, then you often go to go to uh, uh, go to uh, Banaras, and and uh, you see the uh, 
where there's fires being tended. And that is a, uh, uh, you know, very much a part of their, that, 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 that tradition. And, uh, and the image, because <coughs> the image probably is working on different, different levels in the sense of, <coughs> I mean, just on your apparent uh, or superficial level of, of the, uh, yeah, this is, again, this pointing to the kind of the suffering or difficulty. All is burning. I mean, what is, you know, everything is, is burning. It's hot. It's, uh, it is consuming us uh, and, and worthy of being disenchanted, being dispassionate towards. And, uh, but it probably had, uh, I'd say, uh, an even more, say, profound emotional impact when the Buddha's turning the image of something that was being used as a, an object of worship and recognizing that, oh, that is something that is, is really, this is, this is fraught with difficulty, this is fraught with pain. Um, so that the uh, uh, that sense of, of uh, reflection on 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 the that, that fi fire as a, as an image, uh, and so it's uh, maybe we'll leave it there and open it up for any. Questions. It's ten twenty-two. Uh, we're be starting on the section. Yep. Yeah. Or um, if one wanted to read a translation of the Mahabhaga, you know, like, is there is there one book we have that would be the Pali Text Society version, or is there any other versions available? Uh, yeah, the only really, I think the only translation is is uh, is the uh, is the uh, Polytech Society um, I. B. Horner translation, and uh, I mean she was the head of the Polytech Society, so it is especially Mahavaga. I mean, especially those early ones are are are. Uh, you know, quite. Uh, you know, I mean, she's she's obviously knows her stuff. I mean, it is it's probably translated in late forties, early fifties. Um, there's a bit of archaic use of language, uh, but uh, uh, in general, yes, one it's access certainly accessible, and get a, a feel for uh, if one doesn't know the. Uh, Poly language really well, which I certainly don't. Uh, then I've been incredibly uh, grateful for that that that, uh, that translation. I think it's really helped us, and so, you know, like uh, that access to to all of the um, I mean Mahavaga, but then also the yeah those origin stories of the of the Vinaya. I think are incredibly important for giving a sense of. Uh, the the time and place and context of of why some things came to to be. <coughs> One more. Yeah. I get a real sense of that the Hamhaverse where uh, it's in like a man finding a greater happiness puts down a letter, lesser happiness during a fire sermon, you get that mm. that sense of like, this is all burning, put it, put it down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, and that that, um, uh, that sense of of, uh, of freedom and liberation coming from being willing to put stuff down and that, that in reality they Yes, there are very refined happinesses that we can experience, but probably the most um, refined and satisfying is relinquishment and, and 
let it go. It's like how uh, Jim Charles was saying, you know, you let, you let go a little and you get a little bit of peace. You let go a lot, you get a lot of peace. You let go completely and you get complete peace. Also, that that some that that image of fire, of course, is you, it comes up many places in the in the suttas because it is a a Vedic uh, uh, in terms of the world view of the uh, ancient in India, uh, and Agni was a say the, the god of fire who was. Worship, but something that is pervades, um, and uh, and it equates sort of fire with with purification, and uh, and the Buddha is sort of saying, uh, well, let's let's look at it a little bit different, and, and that that the uh, that 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 cooling of the fire through disenchantment and relinquishment is actually um, a, a much more say like a, a effective and realistic purification <clears throat> yeah what's your takeaway from his his um, the Buddha's like methods of uh, convincing or of he was living at Ulubela uh -huh. and, and uh, yeah, all his interactions between him and the Ulubela. Well, I think one of the things is, is this is the early days of his teaching and it, it, it is quite interesting as like there's not that many places where the Buddha uses psychic powers and 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 I think that that, that say this is his kind of early days, and uh, and he, and, you know, and gives you, you know, he has also that sense of strategy in terms of okay, well, this is the beginning of a a I'm trying to put this teaching into the into the into the culture into the public. How am I going to do this? But uh, well, he didn't have a template, and uh, and so that that you know, and, and of course it might not be so cold and calculating, but it, you know, in, in terms of uh, being drawn with a, a, a certain intuition and confidence, uh, you know, in order for people to really accept this teaching, it's going to mean because it goes against the grain of everything in this culture, and everything really in the human condition. And uh, it, it, it's, it's going to need some street dress. <laughs> and uh, so then they, they uh, um, going out and, and being both bold enough and patient enough to teach the Say the foremost teachers of the day uh, was quite quite uh, uh, was quite savvy, and which of course then moves from there to going, going to um, teach the king and the because the, the uh, Magadha was one of the the foremost uh, realms uh, uh, at the time. So, and of course he, he received an invitation. Uh, to, to, to teach him so that rather than going in on his own, going with a sangha and a, a following uh, gave, gave a lot more oomph to his, his, his message. So I don't think it's, it's random what he's doing. Of course that's speculation, 2,500 years later. But, you know, it's, it's, it's a nice fantasy, yeah. or a nice projection, and, and, but, you know, the Buddha was, was really sad. Uh, and he understood how the world was sort of, uh, uh, sort of <coughs> kind of airy, fairy space cadet. And he was very, very rooted in the realities of the 
school. Um, <coughs> dad, I suppose, to, to uh, say like his cousin, Nan Ruda, who, who, uh, who really was a, he was foremost in the world, in a different realm than David Reynolds. But he, he really, human relations were a bit kind of confusing to him, I think. Yeah, but the Buddha really understood the human condition. <laughs> it's like Anuruddha, they asked him, where does food come from? And he said, it comes from the plate. You're right, yes, right. <laughs> it's right, right from the get-go. He's, he's, he's not, not, not that clever, he's just so, so pampered. <laughs> well, one of my favorites is I had that guy who looked it up recently, I came across it as well. Where Ananda is complaining about Anuruddha and his students who are kind of not, not, and they're not behaving properly, and, and uh, you should, and asking the Buddha, and you should really do something to and, and the Buddha, you know, when has Anuruddha ever <laughs> been able to sort of deal with sort of the practicalities of, of other human beings? <laughs> <laughs> The external world. The external world was... was yeah, yeah. 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 I it's always one of the great example of how yeah, all the different temperaments. Of, 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 you can have a personality temperament and it doesn't sort of change you into what after full enlightenment. You still carry that, that personality with you. A little bit, but you know, there's a general trajectory that it's going on. Yeah, it's like he's in our home, but people are still complaining about him. Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, it's like the, uh, uh, the rule on um, sleeping. No, 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 sleep, sleeping in the same place as under the same roof as a woman. Because um, you know, it, it just he didn't pick up on the clue. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. It wasn't for him it wasn't a problem, but then the Buddha said, God, mom's here. 